Welcome back to the Gear Squatch channel. I'm Zeke, and you're wondering, does he wear the same shirt in every video? No. Only when I'm really getting ready for a big trip and I'm trying to knock out like three or four videos before I leave so I can post them all while I'm gone. And it looks like I'm very consistent in posting. So I'm just wearing the same shirt. I'm, I'm filming this video on the same day. But today I'm going to talk about how to prepare for a big trip. And when I say a big trip, not in a cager, which is a car, four wheel vehicle, truck, car, van, or even semis, you know, you got doors, you got a windshield, you get seat belts. We don't get all that on the bike, but long trip on the bike. There's a lot of different ways you can prepare for things. One of the ways to do that is to get a sissy bar. Sissy bar and you take a backpack, your luggage, whatever, you strap it, you, you take some uh, bungee cords and you wrap them around the sissy bar. Sissy bar, if you don't know, if you're watching this, you don't ride, that's what these are, little things on the back. They're used to hold luggage, they're used to whoever you've got riding on the back of your seat to lean back as a backrest. If you're as tall as me and you're on a small bike, you could probably sit on the passenger seat and lean back. I cannot confirm nor deny that I've ever done that. What do you take to prepare? I'm not educating you. I'm actually asking. I want to have a conversation down in the comments. What do you do when you prepare for a long motorcycle trip? What I'm doing is I'm taking this little thing I found on Amazon. It is called the Dalco William Max D-Ring. Do I have to say it? Motorcycle hooker. But not that kind of hooker. I know I was thinking, you were, think, you were thinking that. It, it's a universal fit, it's got a little Velcro. Um, you can see here how I kind of took the Velcro, a little extra video when I was putting the seat on. Separated it to make it fit under the seat. You got the D-rings underneath it, and it's got like a, I don't know if it's real leather or pleather or vinyl or whatever, uh, material that the D-rings rest on so it doesn't nick up your paint or anything like that. Then what you can do, if you don't have a sissy bar, you can slap your bag on the back of it, take some uh, bungee netting, wrap it around or just bungee cords, and you've got hooks that you can hook it to. Uh, I've seen people hook it where your saddlebags are, you know, little bolts that hold your saddlebags in. By the way, anybody watching this, this is now what, the second video of Gear Squatch? I'm not claiming to be an ex expert on anything, so when I say the little bolt thingies, that's my professional terminology of it. Anyways, the little bolts where your saddlebags go on, you can hook it in there. Um, you've got saddlebags. You could just be a minimalist. A lot of people are minimalist when it go, comes to camping and traveling. They throw a couple t-shirts, a couple pair of jeans, a couple pairs of underwear, and some socks. And then they just wash their clothes every time they stop. Well, not every time they stop during the day. I mean, you don't have to wash your clothes every, but like when you're overnight, you get what I'm saying. I can't do that because when I get to Sturgis, I actually have to work a little bit and I'm excited about that because apparently we've got like a big, big spread up there at Sturgis and I get to work and interact with people and tell them about what we do. So that's going to be fun. But because I have to work, I have uniform shirts and I need a couple extra pair of pants in case I get kind of grungy on the road because maybe somebody needs some work done on their bike. I won't be doing it, but maybe I'll hold stuff. And when I hold stuff, I'll get grease on my pants. You see where I'm going with this. So I can't be, do the minimalist approach. So that's why I got that little D-ring thing, the, 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 the motorcycle hooker. That's what I'm doing for my trip. Uh, another thing I really, really, really stress with taking a long motorcycle trip or even just every day, keep it in your motorcycle. Get yourself a little medical kit. You can get them shrink wrapped uh, online, like an emergency trauma kit. It sometimes has sutures in it, sometimes has uh, gauze quick clot stuff, but most importantly, have something with a tourniquet so you can stop bleeding in an appendage if there is an accident. I hope there's not an accident. I hope you're riding safe. I hope you're keeping an eye out for everybody out there and riding like you're invisible. That's another video to come. Have some medical stuff somewhere on your person. You can get them that fit in a, in a pocket. You know, they're just like vacuum packed, sealed, and you can slide them in your pocket, but that's a very important thing to have with you. Another thing, deodorant outside of that it's kind of what you need and what you want if you have medication that you take make sure you have a little satchel for your medication make a checklist before you take off we all know what it's like we get on our bike 
And we get about 10 miles into the ride and we're like, oh shit, we forgot this. And you gotta turn around and go back. So make a checklist before you go on a big trip because if you're just going on a ride for the day, no big deal, you turn around and go back, it's 10 miles away, All right, big deal. But if you get a thousand miles away and you forgot something very important, you're screwed. Preparing for that big trip, make sure you have a checklist before you go. So on my checklist, all the clothes that I need to take for while I'm working there, I'm only taking a couple, you know, t-shirts and jeans for the ride. You know, that's, I'm going to do, it, it, I guess I'm kind of doing the minimalist thing for the ride and then the non-minimalist, minimalist, min, non-minimalist thing for when I get there because I have to have some work clothes. Uh, then I also have to have my computer. I got to have my work computer. So I'll have that in my saddlebags in a padded bag. Um, I'm going to take some hydration, Gatorade, water. Big thing to remember, if you're on a ride that long in the summer, hyponatremia, and I know that sounds like a big word, and it is. It's basically where you're drinking a lot of water trying to replenish your fluids, but you drink too much, and then it takes all the electrolytes out of your system, specifically salt, and it can be deadly. So make sure when you're sweating a lot on a ride, I'm talking about like drenched, you're not just drinking water, drink some Gatorade, something with electrolytes. You could even take a handful of salt. If you're feeling yourself cramp up, salt, sodium is an electrolyte. Take a handful of salt, eat it, eat a banana. But Gatorade's probably the quickest, easiest, I'm sorry. Gatorade's not sponsoring this, so we're not gonna mention them. Gatorade, Powerade, Body f Shield. I don't know, the new one that's all electrolyte stuff. Anything with electrolytes, I don't care which one, until one of y'all sponsors this channel, and then it'll be whichever one of those. But yeah, drink something with electrolytes. That's the quickest way to do it. Pedialyte is good too. Pedialyte is really good to do it. Uh, it works really fast. But just make sure you're getting those and not just chugging water every time because hyponatremia, hyponatremia, thank you, not good for you. Toiletries, you know, deodorant, stuff like that. Uh, for the ride, doesn't matter. We're a bunch of guys, we're, we're gonna stink. When we get there with me working, I gotta have some stuff to not stink. Then if you have a bike with a radio, like mine does, the Road Glide, it has a radio that has Bluetooth. And what have I done? I've created a playlist for 18 hours of riding. Helmet, of course, gear. I'm a big proponent of gear. I'm also a big proponent of freedom. And this is probably a whole nother video, but wear what you're gonna wear. I would recommend that you have gear. If it's a really hot day, you don't wanna have heat strokes, you don't wanna have a full black leather long sleeve jacket, and you need to go a little bit lighter, at least have a vest that has some protection, whether it's leather or the, there's, I've got two vests that are actually motorcycle vests that have some like Kevlar lining and they're thicker. Another part of gear that's protection, but it's kind of more of a toiletry, I guess, but it's protection, it not that kind of protection. Sunscreen. I will be riding with t-shirts someday. I have made this mistake twice. The first time I wore a t-shirt and I went for a ride, Oh, it's only 30 minutes, no big deal. I came back, I had blisters. It was, it was that bad, yeah. The other time I went to see my buddy James at uh, Boswell's Harley Davidson downtown Nashville and I had a Dixon flannel on and it was rolled down on the ride. No big deal, sun protection. I got there, it's hot, so I rolled my sleeves up. We had lunch, we talked, we looked at gear, we did that blah, 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 blah. I got on my bike and I rode home. It was an hour drive. I didn't roll my sleeves back down. So once again, sunburn, arms. If you wear an open face helmet and you don't have a beard, make sure you put sunscreen everywhere. You don't wanna get to wherever you're going on this long trip and be friggin' miserable because you're blistered all over your body. So sunscreen. That's about it on my list, I'm thinking. I can look it up, I have it on my phone. Oh, before you go, if, if you're not due for your 5,000 three hole change, get an oil change just to be safe. Um, now, if you just had an oil change a few hundred miles ago, no big deal. But if it's been a thousand, two thousand miles, just do it, you know? Change your oil. Pay the hundred bucks or whatever it costs for oil nowadays. And just change the oil in the motorcycle. You're gonna feel more secure on the ride and you're not gonna have to worry about 
you know, something just blowing up because it's old oil and, you know. Oh, rain suit. Have a rain suit. Have it ready. So if you're just like, I'm tough and I'm just going to go and ride on into the rain with my jeans and t-shirt, you're going to regret it. What happens is when moist clothing is in contact with the skin, you ever been in the bathtub for a long time and your skin starts to wrinkle up? If you took that wrinkled up, wet, soaky skin and really hit it hard on something, not even sharp, but has an edge, you could potentially rip that skin. It weakens the skin and you can get sores, really. And you can chafe real bad just from riding. You're not running, you're not walking, but then just the little bit of movement in between your legs next to the tank or the engine or the seat or whatever can cause chafing. And if you got wet jeans, cause you were trying to be tough. I'm sorry, that's just stupid. Get some rain gear. You don't have to have the, you know, $200 Harley Davidson reflector super suit that looks like you're a superhero. You know what I'm talking about. But you can get, you know, less expensive ones. Harley has, you know, a range of different prices. I saw a suit the other day. I, was, I actually was, whew, it was actually kind of cool. One, it fit my arms. I'm not going to go into that. But it was like 400 bucks. Uh, you can go on eBay. That's where I found mine. I found a Harley rain suit on eBay. I got a great deal from a great guy. We did some negotiating, got a steal on it. You can get the frog togs. If you're a fisherman, you've heard of frog togs. If you're not, check them out. They're inexpensive. They keep the rain off of you and they're not like just a rubber sheet that makes you really hot. The example, the rubber sheet that makes you really hot. I've got a Columbia rain suit I've had for years. It is strictly for rain in a you know fall, spring, winter environment because there is no breathability. It is just like a solid sheet of rubber on your sleeves, your legs, everything. But you'll you'll stay dry. You just might have heat stroke too. Get those tech shirts, the technical shirts. You may not look like your typical biker, but it you know the moisture wicking things that athletes wear. Uh, they kind of keep you cool on a hot day. I've got a couple of those just in case it gets really, really hot and I'm gonna to take my t-shirt off and throw those tech shirts on. Of course, everybody needs their phone. Do not use this while you're riding. But if there's an emergency, you need to get a hold of somebody. If you get lost, you need to get a hold of somebody or use the GPS on there. And also, if you have your phone, it's a good idea. If you have the money to invest in one, get one of those little battery packs. Not the cheap ones you get at the gas station that last like three charges and then they can never recharge again. I'm talking about go on Amazon, spend the 50, 60, 100 bucks on like, I, I, I have an anchor, not sponsored of course, but it will charge a device. It'll charge 10 devices on one full charge of the battery. And it only takes an hour and a half to charge that battery. So it's kind of cool if I need it uh, in an emergency, I've got it to charge. My bike also has a charging cable on it. So that's cool if your bike has a charging cable, good. Remember your charging cable. That's all, it's a long video, I'm sorry. But if you're gonna go on a long trip, that's a good list to have. If you have any additions to give me, put them in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. I wanna hear everybody's comments. Uh, I, I interact as much as I can. Uh, usually right after the video post, but I try to do as much as interactions as I can with the people that are viewing the videos because I'm grateful to you for watching the videos. Put in the comments, what do you do to prepare for a long trip on a motorcycle? I don't care what you do in an RV. Maybe when I get older and I can't ride anymore, I'll have RV squatch. And we'll interact, we'll talk about cool things. Maybe other people will get cool ideas. If you have an idea for a video, put it in the comments below. I'll do a video on it if I can. Don't ask me to ride a Grom, I'm too big. Actually, that would be a really funny video. And if you're going to Sturgis, this is, if you're watching this video in 2020 or beyond, don't react to this. But if you're going to Sturgis in 2019, in the uh, July, August of 2019, hit me up in the comics below. Comics? Not comic. Hit me up in the comments below. I'll learn to talk one day and we'll meet up. We'll hang out. Make sure you hit the like and the subscribe button below if you liked it and you want to subscribe. Don't if you didn't. And thank you for watching. Have fun, ride safe, and we'll see you next time.